Um, introduce yourself and explain your role with Center Care Volunteers. Will do. I'm Betsy Boyer. I'm the United Way Liaison for Center Care Volunteers. Um, we're a group of volunteers that uh, get together and do things for the residents at the new center care facility, formerly Center Crest. And so for those who may not know, have heard of Center Crest, uh, talk about that a little bit. Center Crest um, was the county nursing home here in the area for 80, 80 years. And in 2013, it went to a nonprofit status. That's when Center Care came in. Center Care is the nonprofit board. We built a brand new facility, which we moved into in March. And um, it is now Center Care. Center Crest is gone. Where is that location, first of all? And then tell me a little bit about some of the services you provide. The location is uh, just off the Benner Pike for people who uh, have been in the region for a long time. It's right behind the former um, Starlight Drive-In. Oh, yeah, yeah. Movie theater. Um, we're on 250 Persia Road, and um, it's a great building. <laughs> it's a big building. Um we more than doubled the size of the old building. What we do, what the center care volunteers do is, um, unfortunately, with the pandemic, we've not been able to have volunteers in the building for the last almost two years now. But the volunteers are such a critical part of uh, the everyday lives of our residents. They come in, they visit, they, do, they bring that outside touch into our residents, and they help with many of the programs that are usually taking place for the residents. Some of the key things and some of the things that United Way makes possible for us to do is um, one of the most critical services at the building, if you ask any of the ladies and gentlemen, is the beauty shop. And um, Center Care is able to offer to our residents um, that service at no cost. We're not aware of any other facility who does that. All of the other facilities charge for the hair care services. Wow, that's amazing. And so our residents, um, because we're only one of three facilities in the area that takes Medicaid residents, 70% of our residents are Medicaid residents. And what that means is they get $45 a month to spend on their own personal needs and so many of the facilities charge $35 to $45 for hair care services. So obviously our residents would not be able to have that service otherwise. This way, our residents um, can get their hair done every week if that's what they choose. They get a shampoo set, they can get cuts, they can get perms, they can get color. The gentlemen get their haircuts as well. So it's an incredible service and it's a huge morale boost to the residents on Beauty Shop Day. You, Yeah, you probably, I mean, it, it seems like it's minor, but I, I see it as being a major thing just because just the confidence and, uh, just, just self-awareness goes up. Oh, yeah. That, right? Um, there, um, you don't mess with the ladies on beauty shop day. You get them up, you get them dressed, you get them fed, and you get them up to the beauty shop. They'll tell you <laughs> in a heartbeat that's what they want to happen. So, well, in two years when I'm ready, I'll, I, I guess I'll just grow my hair out. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, some of the other things that are provided at, at Center Care because of United Way, is a ceramic program and that's been cut back um, because we can't get the volunteers in. We still do it on a limited service. But again, um, 
that's another one of those things that many of our residents would not be able to participate in if we didn't pick up the costs. So we pay for all of the supplies and we actually have an in-house kiln so we can fire the ceramic pieces right there after the residents do it. They love ceramic day. We always have residents who enter projects in Grange Fair and again, talk about a morale boost. When they come back from the fair with their ribbons, they are always proudly displayed um, in their rooms for, for everyone to see. They also use those items for gifts for their family members. So again, just a huge morale boost. We love to keep our residents as busy as possible. So they're not just sitting in their rooms, sitting and doing nothing. So those kinds of programs make a huge difference. Right. Talk, go a little bit deeper on, on the volunteers. Uh, obviously, during COVID, you said they were, they were not allowed at all. How did you compensate for that? And then do you foresee, like, is there a timeline when you're going to be, is it, you said it's limited now? It is very, yeah, yeah. Um, we had to cut back many of the programs, as I said, our therapeutic recreation uh, staff were amazing. They literally, when we were in the period where the residents could not be out of their rooms because of quarantine, when we have an outbreak, they have to stay in. They took these things, they would actually take like the ceramics to a room and work with a resident one-on-one -on -one to be able to still do uh, the ceramics and give them something to do. Um, it's much better when we have the volunteers because of, there's a group setting and everybody's interacting and um, they love to have the outside world come in when the volunteers come. Um, pretty much the same thing happened with the beauty shop services. Um, our TR director is actually licensed so she could go with staff and help to maintain the hair cuts and so on. When you figure in a month's time, we do approximately 560 plus heads of hair every month. Um, it was cut back considerably because we did not have the volunteers there to help do that. Um, as I said, volunteers are critical to the services, to the residents. Right. So is it it's just slowly uh, getting better as far as how many uh, volunteers are allowed or are you still kind of stuck right now? We're still with the county being in such a high rate of transmission right now. Um, we are by the state required to maintain a no entrance policy for volunteers. Um, everybody is very anxious for the volunteers to come back. Yeah. Um, as are the volunteers. Um, it's, it's just something that we need. Right. We can't wait to get back to. Oh, so when, when they are allowed to come back and someone out there sees this, how would they be able to uh, put their name in the hat to become a volunteer? And is there like a uh, certification or anything that has to be done? They would simply need to call... Um, Bobby Salvaterra who at Center Care at 278-6000 when we get to that point. She would get them an application and yes, they do need to fill out an application. There's a training process that has to happen, um, again, required by the state for us to be sure people working with the residents understand how to do that. Um, you can pretty much uh, do the volunteer work when we're open full um, at your leisure. We have multiple, multiple opportunities for um, the beauty shop, as I said, the ceramics program. The Center Care Volunteers maintains a gift shop for the residents. We're always looking for volunteers to come in and work um, in the gift shop. Um, and um, there's Bible study programs. There's, as we get into the holiday season, one of the big events uh, for the volunteers normally, um, 
the staff has had to do it the last two years is a Christmas shop that we have. We look for donations, financial donations from the community and from our uh, United Way dollars. And then we buy gifts and all of the residents are allowed to come in and shop for Christmas gifts for their family members at no cost to That's them. A great idea. That's amazing. So that they have gifts to give to their family members when they come in through the holidays. That's always a huge time for the residents and they love it. Oh, I can, I can only imagine. And, and you know, it's, it seems like our culture is one of the few that really doesn't um, focus on uh, those that have many years of experience over the younger uh, people and, and embrace that. So what, what you're doing is very important and uh, uh, we really appreciate it in the Center County community. We say about our volunteers and I speak from experience on this. Um, I got involved because my mom was in Centercrest and I was so impressed by what I saw being done for her via the auxiliary. We were then the auxiliary, we're now the center care volunteers that I joined. But you, and, and, we, and you could ask any of the volunteers, we would all tell you, you come, you volunteer, you fall in love and you just stay. Uh -huh. um, right. you, don't, you don't go away. These folks are just amazing. It's tremendous what you can learn by just sitting down and having a conversation with these folks. And they're so appreciative of what people do for them. So it's a great experience. Just feeding off the energy and, and extolling knowledge. That, that's what it's all about. Uh, so one last time, just contact information on your website if anybody's you know interested in donating or whatever. Um, the easy website, um, because we're, the volunteers are connected to it, is um, centercare.org. And then you can look for the volunteers and link in that way. Um, if you wanted information, you can, as I said, call Bobby Salvaterra at uh, Center Care, and we are 814-278-6000. Thank you so much, Betsy, for your time. I really appreciate it, and best of luck. You. Continue doing what you're doing. Thank you.